with confidence because it's not just what you say. It's definitely what you say, but it's how, how you, you say, say it. it. That's right. So we want you saying your lines with confidence. So let's, let's, uh, and when you master it, are you going to sound confident? Absolutely. And you're not going to sound like what we call some of you guys, you're stuck in a certain role and that role is scared newbie me. Okay. So you're stuck in scared newbie me. You get on the phone and what do you sound like? You sound like a scared newbie. All right. So we're going to try to get you into a new role. In, in just the next uh, time we have with you, we're going to try to transform you. We're going to try to turn you into a new you. We're going to try to turn you into a new role that we call Master Caller. Master okay, you're Caller. You're going to be Master Caller Me. Write that down. Yeah, so say, I am Master Caller Me. Because that's what you got to be. If you want to be hugely successful in this business, you have to be a Master Closing Caller. And now write this down, guys. There's three steps to every deal. Okay. Uh, three steps to every deal. And uh, the three steps are opening call, closing call, and deal meeting. Okay. So opening call, that is done by your VA. And Ron explained that your virtual assistant is calling and getting you leads and turning out so you have a stack of leads to call. Okay. So the opening call, when that's done, you've got a completed lead sheet. Now, the second part is the closing call. And so that's when you step in, and that's what we're talking about today, is becoming a master caller on this call, becoming expert closing caller. And then obviously the, the point of the closing call is to work out the important million dollar questions, get the answers to those. So that's basically working out the terms. When Ron says getting the answers to the million dollar questions, he means working out the terms. And that so, brings you to the deal meeting. And I want to talk about that actually. You know that all of the mentors have been calling your leads um, on Monday and Tuesday, getting ready for the summit here, the virtual summit. And guess what? Brian and I actually, I'm going to give you the numbers. We had called 30, we actually spoke with 32 sellers, spoke with 32 sellers. Those are your leads that you turn in for this virtual summit. And out of those 32 sellers that we spoke with, we made 14 deal appointments. I'm telling 14 deal appointments. And out of those 14 deal appointments, I think like 10 or 11 of them were no money down. Crazy. I mean, the real estate market right now is the best. I mean, the sellers are so motivated. This is a different market, isn't it? That's right. And now has Lynette mastered these calls? Is Lynette a master caller? I love making calls. Yeah, she is the example. And she is, I mean, you can see it. If you guys go on the Gold Club and stuff, there's videos. And, uh, you know, we have developed a real mastery of these closing calls. Um, so that's what we want to help you guys do is develop that kind of mastery. You can't get on the phone with 32 sellers and get 14 appointments unless you're really good at it. Okay. So that's how what we're going to teach you now, right? Yes, that's right. So okay. um, now, and so we're going to teach you to master them. That's right. A lot of new investors just stop doing the business instead of mastering the phone. And that just breaks my heart. Yeah, and you know, why is that, guys? Why do people actually quit? It's It comes down to one thing, one word. Starts with an F. You all know what I'm talking about. It's fear. Fear. Okay? It's fear. You're, it's fear of rejection. And so you're scared. You're, to something, you're doing something new you've never done before. And guys, a lot of you have uh, a lot of expertise in your field of choice. Uh, you have a, you're successful in your career. You make good money. And now all of a sudden you're starting something new and you're not an expert. And you actually kind of maybe will look stupid sometimes. Oh, my gosh. You know, and that fear of looking stupid and re being rejected is so uh, strikes to your heart to, so deeply that it will keep you from actually doing the business. OK, right. but guys, guess what? It's a couple simple steps and learning this stuff. I, I'm telling you, you're going to feel way more confident that you can handle this in the next half an hour of us going over it. So uh, now, obviously, beyond this, guys, uh, mastering the phone we're going to teach you what we can teach you here in this in this time we have with you but there's more training ron knows how important this is he actually created a whole event that's right mastering the phone event and it was a two-day uh event a boot camp that we taught with him and we go over we do a whole hour-long presentation on mastering fear so i we don't have a lot of time to cover fear here um that 
deserves a whole hour and a half presentation like it is on the video. Uh, so we're going to actually tell you guys how you can get that video at the end and where you could actually basically attend that whole two day mastering the phone boot camp. And that, you know, you're going to get a lot of great training here, but wow, that's two days with Ron and us. Okay. So now, and where are you going to find a business? You're going to always learn, you're going to have to learn something new. <clears throat> now this business model is such that it's a very productive business model. Guys, if you do, Ron talks about four deals a year. I like to talk about one deal a month. Okay. So if you guys can get on a rhythm where you're doing one pretty house deal a month or 10 a year, let's round it down to 10 a year. Yeah. If you guys can do 10 deals in a year, you're going to create wealth long-term. That's the beautiful thing about the pretty house business is this long-term wealth creation. And so we really want to get you guys going and get you uh, making the money. And uh, there's going to be obstacles in any business, but the obstacles in this are minimal compared to the rewards because you do that one deal and you set yourself up for an instant payday of 10 or 20 grand plus uh, monthly cash flow plus at the very end maybe a huge payday guys we closed one deal last year that we had held for quite a while we bought it uh when we first met ron in that first uh, year and we actually collected a paycheck for two hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars on one pretty house one terms deal at the end Okay, and now that's wealth creation. We had had that house for like 15 years. So, but if you guys buy, start buying stuff now and buy 10 a year, you're going to be in great shape. Okay, so we want to get you past any problem. Now, you only got one mission on the closing call. What's your mission on the closing call, guys? One mission. Get the million dollar questions answered and you make the appointment if you like the answers. That's right. So we want you guys to get on that call uh, and... Uh, you know, here's the thing. You need to make a connection with that person, especially if you're doing this deal more virtually now. So if you are not going to actually visit their house for the deal meeting, uh, you're going to want to really uh, connect with that person. So, yes, you need to get the answers to these questions. What is the path to those uh, and getting the answers to those questions is you coming off confident. All right. Now there's three paths to confidence that I like to talk about. And this is the way you're going to get these answers. This is the way you become a master caller and people answer your questions. Okay. So here's, uh, uh, the three paths to confidence guys. Hopefully you can read that. And the first one is education. The second one is experience. And the third one is role control. And so we're going to talk about all of these, uh, education is what you're getting right now. You're getting the best training in the world when you're getting exposed to Ron LeGrand, Global Publishing, and our whole group here. Uh, we have, we're out there doing deals. We know what we're talking about. And this is like rubber meets the road stuff. We don't talk about theory at, at the Quick Start event or any of our events. We're, we're seriously getting you guys trained up to go out there and do deals now. I, in fact, after this session, I, I think you guys could go and call some people out Zillow and close some deals. Absolutely. Okay, so that's the power of education. Now, education isn't just to give you the, in terms of educating you on closing calls, what two things do we have to get you educated on? The scripts and confidence. Okay, that's the two things we got to get you educated. Write that down, scripts, confidence. That's right. So uh, the three paths to confidence, that education should give you confidence. The second thing is experience. So guys, you know, when Lynette made her first closing call, do you think she was ma a master caller? No, actually, you know what? I was afraid of the phone. I know. I was actually afraid of the phone. I That's was. Right. And um, Brian, actually, this was 17 years ago. I had an experience. I had a real estate background. So you would think that I'd be very confident on the phone, but I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say and how to say it. And so until the scripts materialized, the scripts educated that, her. that was the key. Yes, the scripts will educate you on what to say and how to say it is that becoming a master caller. And considering yourself and thinking of yourself as a master caller, and I'm going to get into that role. That's a new role for a lot of you. Now, guys, some of you are great on the phone. Some of you have done calls your whole life. It's part of your regular career. And it, there's not a big, huge learning curve to get you to be a master caller. I just got to get you the scripts. But most of you guys have not really done this before. And so that's the jump. That's the leap that we have to make to get you from being, you know, uh, someone who works at the post office to being really good at calling a bunch of sellers off Zillow and closing deals or using obviously your opening call, filled out opening call sheets from the VA. So let's get you guys some deal meeting appointments. Okay. Now, what are the million dollar questions? We're going to go into this. And so, uh, 
remember there's there's actually four write this down guys there's four pretty house uh terms there's four terms that you're gonna have to figure out with people price is the first one number one is purchase price. price purchase price right and so we call these the four pretty house deal points uh so one the first is purchase price the second is monthly payment i actually i think the way ron has them here is down payment it would be the second one so purchase price is one down payment or non-refundable option deposit if you're doing a lease purchase right but you can write down down payment that's your second term monthly payment you got to figure out how much you're going to pay per month okay and then length of term now a lot of times guys we don't really get into the length of term that much on the call we wait till we get out to the house now we need to find out they're flexible they need to know that we yes, you know, that need we're, time. we're looking for years and not months so if the right. seller can give us some time Okay, so let's go over the first um, million dollar now, question. Now, when you guys get to this point, though, I want you coming off with confidence. So when you get to this point where you're asking these questions, we're going to do a little role play here. And I want you to role play here, too, with us in yes. a second. Okay, so remember those three paths to confidence, education, experience, and role control. Now, I want you to uh, watch Lynette role play this with me. Okay. Okay, so if we can agree on the terms, what's the least you could take? Um, well, maybe 200,000. Is that the best that you can do? Mm, maybe I could do 190. That's within the range. We can talk about that when I come out and see the house. Right. Now, you don't even necessarily have to agree to that. When I say 190, that's an, a good follow-up line. Write that one down, guys. So if you're writing these lines down, if we can agree on terms, what's the least you can take? And whatever they say, is that the best you can do? And then... Don't even commit to that. Don't say, okay, that sounds great. Because then they're going to think for sure you're paying them the 190. That's right. That's right. And you may still want to have some wiggle room when you get out there. And so that's why you just say that's within the range, which is a great line. Uh, it really comes down to what you're saying, guys, these great lines. Now, I will tell you that uh, one of the things we really push with sellers is that we can pay full price. We even have it on our signs, and that's what differentiates us from our competition, is that we can afford to pay them, when they can give us terms, we can pay full price for the house. So uh, if they are very price sensitive, and you know that, and they say, hey, I called you because your ad said, uh, uh, we'll pay full price for your house, and you know that, that they're sensitive to that, the softer question here, this question right here that you're looking at on, on your screen is, is the, you know, the stronger way to come. And then if you want to do a softer way, I just say, so you're asking this, do you have some wiggle room on that price? Do you have a little wiggle room? I love that term wiggle room. We use it all the time. Wiggle room. What does that get you when you ask for wiggle room? Wiggle room. Wiggle room. <laughs> so that's a great one. All right. Now guys, you practice this. Now let's oh, yeah. say, okay, now I want you to go through it. So uh, we're you, role playing with you now. Yes. All right. So now we're a couple and we're sitting. That's right. In our house and you're asking the question. Okay, go Ask ahead. the question. Go. If we can agree on that. Um, what do you think, honey? Maybe like 200? Yeah, 200. Mm, I guess we could do 190, honey. Yeah. Yeah, 190. Okay. Now I want you to say this. However you said that, we're going to role play that same thing one more time. But I want you to say a special phrase, guys. What do I want you to say? I want you to say, right now, I am master caller me. Okay? I'm telling you that just by saying that and saying it strong, that gives you so much confidence. Right now, I am master caller me. Okay? All right. Now, say that to yourself. Now, you're going to redo the role play. Okay. Okay? So, go ahead. If we can agree on the terms, what's the least um, you would take? What do you think? Mm, 200. 200. Is that the best you could do? Mm, maybe we could do 185. The way you asked that question was so confident. Yeah, 185. Right? 185. Okay, so that's what I want. That even if you want to say that, if you're, if you're ready to do your closing call and you're ready to pick up the phone, uh, say, I, right, right now, now I'm a master, master caller, caller me. me. That's right. Because that's that confidence. That's going to give you that confidence. Now, who is Master Caller? I, we're gonna do this real, real quick, guys. Who is Master Caller? Master Caller is supremely confident, okay, obviously. They motion, 
master caller understands that motion creates emotion. Now, this is a little tricky because I want you to stick to your scripts, but some of you feel good when you stand up and walk around, you know, when you get going. And I like to walk around when I'm on the phone, don't you, honey? Yes, and I like to have my wolf hugger. Right. So sometimes, you know, you want to be able to walk around. And uh, so that's that I want you to have motion can create emotion, which gives you that confidence. Now, listen, I want you to all have a schedule for calls. Master caller me has a schedule. That means what are the best times to call me? Uh, the best times we find is from 5 to 7 p.m., 5 to 7 p.m., and guess what? The schedule makes it real. Yes, and honestly, in the beginning, as you're getting leads, uh, it's not going to take 5 to 7 p.m. If, you know, how many leads are you going to have in a day? If you've got, you know, five new leads in a day, that's a lot, and that's not going to take you more than 20 minutes probably to make all those calls unless you get some good ones. I don't mind you spending time on the phone building rapport. If you're talking about their kids and their dog, now if you know it's a good lead, I want you to take time to build rapport. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. But so supremely confident, schedule for calls. That should be every every night at six or whatever it is, and then on, on Saturday too. Uh, and then the last thing, guys, what is Master Caller Me? Master Caller Me is a superhero. How, how can I say that? Master Caller Me is such a superhero. Master Caller Me is going to make you rich. Master Caller Me is the role that you need to be able to play to be successful in this business. So let's all say it. I am Master Caller Me. I am right now. And guys, I want you to say that. Say the right now part because you're really feeling it then. Right now, I am Master Caller Me. Go ahead and type it right now. Right type now. it. I, I am, am Master, Master Caller, Caller Me. Master Caller that's what I want to see it. So that's that's what I want you I to do. I am Master Caller Me. And do you, do you think that's going to make you feel that much more confident? Yes, when you go through all these questions. So now the down payment. The second question. We okay. usually buy with nothing down, okay? I'm going to need a little something down. Oh, uh, well, if we did put some money down, what's the least you could take? Mm, I suppose 3%. Okay, now guys, usually you're trying to buy with nothing down and uh, you just want to approach this with the assumptive close. Write that down. Let me role play this. Okay. You ask me. You got some lipstick on your teeth. Uh. <laughs> gotta do the makeup. Okay. So. Uh, uh, let me role play. Okay. okay. So we usually put nothing down, okay? Uh, well, gosh, I really would like to get some money down. Like I said, we usually put nothing down, but if we were going to put a little something down, what's the least amount we could put down? Um, well, I'd like to get at least a couple thousand for moving. That's okay. within the range. We can talk about that when we come see the house. Okay. I love that. If you didn't write down that's within the range, don't forget to write that one down. Okay. So this is your script for down. Now, this is for payment. Okay, yeah. guys, I'll cover your payment until I, until I pay you off in full, okay? Now, remember, this is if they have a payment. If there's an underlying mortgage and the payment is, you know, uh, whatever the payment is, if there's an underlying mortgage, that's what you're trying to go for. So you're just trying to cover that underlying payment. That's right. And so if you, hopefully you have the payment and the mortgage information because Ron's VAs, Global Publishing's virtual assistants are so awesome. A lot of times they do get it. Sometimes they don't, but we're going to talk about that. They right. are the best VAs out there. Guys, so, if the, that doesn't mean that's not a completed opening call. If everything is, we're going to show you the lead sheet, but just because the mortgage information is in there doesn't mean it's not complete. So if, if you um, suspect that they have a payment, and you don't have that mortgage information, you can just say, so the way it usually works is that we'll go ahead and cover your payment until we pay you off in full. So approximately how much is your payment, including the property taxes and insurance, since we're gonna be covering that for you. Okay, that was really good. Now, Lynette is really expert at that. I, I, you know, she's really good. She's great at getting that information. But remember, if the house is free and clear, you can just say, what's the least you would take per month? Now, sometimes if you want to have a little softener at the top, you can say, if we work everything out, what's the least you could take per month? If we work everything else out or if we come to, now Ron says, if we come to agreement on the terms, uh, some way like that, what's the least you would take per month? I will tell you guys, if you have a mortgage calculator and you know the house is free and clear going in, you can go ahead and work out a payment. 
Uh, you can put in something like 4% and see what you come out with. And so you can be a little prepared. I want you to have an idea, but we always want you to shoot for a 300 to $500 a month positive cash flow. So you got to kind of work that out. If you think, hey, I can get 1500 a month for this property, then you got to know in your head going into this conversation, it helps if you're prepared. You got to know I can pay 1100 Now, if you go in completely blind and have no idea what you can pay, and you say, what's the least you could take per month? And they say 1200 and you didn't kind of prep in advance and realize that with the taxes and insurance, the most I'm going to be able to pay them is 1100 You might jump on that and say, okay, that sounds good. Okay, so that's why I like you to do a little prep on this so that you have a sense of what you can afford to pay before you ask this question and leave it totally open. And you can go to bankrate.com. Yeah, bankrate.com is a good source. Zillow has a mortgage calculator on it too. So. so wait, let me role play this. Okay. So what's the least you would take per month? Wait, uh, let me point something out here. Okay. Silence is golden. I love it. Whoever speaks first is the loser. So when you guys ask this question, shut up. Okay. What's the least you would take per month? The more silence and awkward silence, wait for the seller to make you the offer. Okay. So we have a lot of silence. Go ahead. No, you have to ask the question. Oh, yeah. What's the least you would take per month? Well, hmm, well... I guess now just whatever happens, you don't talk. Whenever you ask a question like that, whatever the question is, just leave it hanging there. And especially if it's a tough question and then wait till they say something and come across with something. Okay. So I'll say $1,200. Is that the best you can do? Maybe I could do like 1150. Okay. So you're working. That's a free and clear payment. Now, now there is, remember there's another term and that's length of term. And so honestly, if you just want to get to the point, you know, the strongest way to come on term is just say, we usually get three, 30 years. Okay. But a lot of times people aren't prepped to give you 30 years. You're trying to get at least five to 10 years, but the longer you get guys, the longer you hold on to a house, the more money you're going to make because that principal balance is getting reduced the whole time. So even if the house stays the exact same price as what you bought it for, uh, in about, you know, 10, 15 years, there's going to be a huge amount of equity in there just from the principal reduction. That's right. Okay. That's so right. basically Ron says, deal with the people who want to deal with you and, and whack the rest. At With lightning, lightning speed. speed. Is that whack? Yes, yes. whack them. <laughs> whack them. Okay, so Ron has a t-shirt on this, guys, <laughs> that I'm sure you've probably seen. There's some really cool stuff on the Gold Club uh, in the shop, and he's got these great t-shirts. So that's right. That's one of his great t-shirts. So now there's. let's look at the steps uh, to make this happen. This is We're turning you into master callers right here in within the span of a very short period of time. And, of course, you guys are going to follow up. You're going to get this mastering the phone video so you can really become master callers because this whole business boils down to this. If you guys were listening yesterday to Sophia Riccio, uh, she's a student that we worked with and she's got uh, Ron's in our scripts and boy, she is a go-getter and she talked about doing the business virtually and Ron was so impressed with her yesterday. And so she really, she gets it. And what does she say? Ron said, Sophia, if you could give the students out there one tip, uh, one key tip on what it takes to be successful at this, what did she say? Who heard that? She said, mastering Master the, the phone. phone. Yep. And, and she, guess what? She went to mastering the phone twice. Yep. In fact, you'll probably see her in the video. Yes. And so you met her yesterday and now you're going to see her on the, on the video. So you're getting the names and the numbers for the Fizbos. Listen, this is sourcing. Okay. So write this down. Step one is we call this sourcing your own leads. That's right. Now, remember, you have given your VA uh, two zip codes that they're going to send you leads out of. But if they're just calling leads in those zip codes, there's other students who've requested those zip codes. So those leads may go to you know, other people as well. If you're sourcing them, that's the best way to make sure they're coming back to you and sourced for you. And so go through and, and get names and numbers of sellers from any source you can think of. Zillow is obviously a huge one. Uh, we love Zillow. Um, listen, guys, we're going to do a whole presentation on social media tomorrow. 
and we're going to get into Zillow. We're going to give you a crash course on Zillow. You're going to really want to watch that social media because that's the wave of the future. And it so really tomorrow is. we have a presentation. Uh, we're going to get into that social media. So uh, you're going to love that presentation. Really get excited about what we, what we can teach you. Teaching but we go, yeah, we go into Zillow. We do a Zillow crash course that there's eight points to. So get ready to write a lot of notes there too. So like Brian said, who is it more motivated when the seller calls you or you call the seller? So that's what Ryan's talking about sourcing. Yes. So when you when the seller calls you, obviously that's great. Okay. So number two, after your uh, VA has the lead sheets, they're going to call those and develop the opening calls, and then they're going to send the completed lead sheets back to you. Now, is that the has the opening call been done when they send the lead sheet back to you? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, it's yes, been done. So when you get a completed call. lead sheet. That's the opening call is done and it's awaiting your closing call. Now, here's the here's the process on closing calls, guys. Every time you get a lead, every time you get a new opening call lead sheet, I want you to call it every day and leave a text every day until you get all of them. That's your sense of urgency. If you wait a week to call them from the day you got it, there's no sense of urgency coming from you. And so the seller is thinking you're not that serious. So can I tell them uh, the text message? Obviously, a lot of people are home now. A lot of sellers are home, which was awesome. That's what we noticed when we were calling your leads. Mm -hmm. But the text message, if they don't pick up, then you immediately leave a text message and you say, hi, my name is Lynette Wolf. I'm interested in buying your house. What is a good time that we can talk? So you're interested in buying their house. You're not a real estate agent. Yeah. Don't say you're interested in their house. That could be, they could think you're a sneaky agent who's not interested in buying. You got to get that across that you're the buyer. You're the buyer. Okay. So, so Brian, the, what's the definition of a lead? The de definition of a lead is a filled out property information sheet, which here it is right here. Ta-da. Okay. So this is your lead property information sheet. This is the sheet that your VA fills out and sends back to you. Now look at the starred sections on here. I will tell you that you're not always going to get all every star filled out. Sometimes uh, a seller won't give their information to your VA because they know that's your assistant and they want to talk to you. They want to talk to the principal. And so that's okay. Uh, every once in a while, uh, they won't get it, but whatever they get, hopefully they're getting all those starred, in, you know, starred sections filled out. Those but, are all the crucial ones. But Ron's VAs are the best. They're trained that's by right. Ron Legrand himself. And it wouldn't be the worst idea for you guys to practice doing a couple of these on your own, calling Zillow to realize, you know, what your VA de deals with. You're not going to want to do it very long, uh, but, you know, once you get through it and look at the start sections, guys, asking price. Asking price. Uh, what do you what think do you, it would appraise right, for? And then obviously the mortgage information. That's right. Uh, and then you're trying to get a yes or no. Now, the top thing that you're looking for, obviously, is a yes lead. And that means that they're flexible on the finance. But if you get a no, sometimes we turn no's to yeses when you explain the process, mm -hmm. how so, you just need a little bit of time from the seller, and that's why we can pay full price. Right. Sometimes they just didn't understand the question. Yeah. Okay. So once you get the lead sheet back, how often do you call it, everybody? Every day. Every day until you get a hold of them and leave a text. And on the third day, leave a video text. Oh, yes. I'm not going to teach you how to do a video text right now. Maybe we'll have time in our social media presentation tomorrow to teach it. But you're going to do a video text uh, on the third day, and that will get them to call you. Trust me. Okay, so call the seller. Now, there's three ways this thing's going to go. This is your closing call. Remember, opening call, closing call, deal okay. meeting. Three ways this is going to go. Either they're, it's a dead lead, they're a suspect, they're never going to sell to you, and they go into the suspect file. Okay, and then maybe if you want to call them in a month or whatever, uh, whatever, but that, you may never talk to them again. The second way this is going to go is it's a deal meeting. You make an appointment. So then it should go into a file. It should go into a file folder with the address of that property on it and your contracts, your agreements in there and your basic, you know, your authorization to release information, your basic uh, information because you're going over to their house. Uh, not for the next next couple months, maybe, but you're going to be going over to their house and they're going to be signing all this paperwork. So that that's the second way this can go. The third way it can go, it can go into a follow up status where they're not ready right now, but you get a sense that they could be ready. They could want to sell this property to you. So if that's the case, uh, you have you guys have there's a dream system that you can follow up. 
This is actually it, through the Gold Club, and you can sign up for this program where it's actually a CRM. It's a tracking, a customer tracking uh, database, and it, it makes sure that you don't let people get great leads falling through the cracks. Now, you're going to have a paper lead sheet still because you've got a paper lead sheet sitting there with notes and stuff on it. That's going to be in your, uh, that's going to go into a follow-up file folder you're going to have a box with one through 31 hanging there and it's going to go in there so after you call them they either go to a suspect file they go into their own folder because you've got a deal meeting with them and you got to get the paperwork ready or they go into your follow-up file and your crm that's your right your dream system the dream system is yes. phenomenal okay okay now this is your appointment script so once you get to the point where you are in general agreement or within the range on all the terms, then this is the time that you go ahead and make that appointment. Honey, would you like to go ahead and make Yeah, that? okay. So basically, I'm gonna say, um, I'll, are you the, first thing you wanna make sure, are you the only one on title? So you're gonna say, are you the only one on title? And maybe they say no, and that's when you yeah. say, if possible, I'll need all owners when I come, and anyone else you need, they're involved that helps you make the decision, okay? Yeah. All decision makers must be present, otherwise they're not gonna sign. So sometimes, guys, there's someone who's not in the title but who lives there, like their mother-in-law or something. Okay, if they're part of the decision-making process, you, you know, it's good to have them there. Now, at the bottom of this screen, oh, let me, guys, let me do yes notice first. that it says, don't mess it up. If they say, no, the, all people aren't gonna be here, oh. and you can't get them there once, you know, out of state or something, Go anyway, get it worked out with the one and follow up with the second one. Okay, so are you the only one um, on title? Yes. Okay, great. Last question. If I come to your house and I like it and we agree on the details, are you ready to make a decision now and get some paperwork done while I'm there? Um, no. There's really no reason for me to come until we're ready to sell, until you're ready to sell. Do you know when that might be? Okay, so guys, what you're trying to do is you're trying to lock them down and make them put them into a decision making mode. That's you right. don't want to be driving out to a bunch of houses and not buying them. And so that's a huge waste of time. Now, I will say that we actually recommend that you go out to some houses in the beginning. And if, if it looks like close to a deal, you're never going to get it until you get out there. So I do like you going out to houses once all this stuff blows over. Uh, and and, and the more course. times you can get in front of people. Or, guys, this is the same thing by Skype or FaceTime or That's what I was gonna say. Facebook Live. Yeah, That's right. If you do Face, uh, you can do uh, FaceTime. Um, you can do Skype, um, Google. There's so many different programs out there where it's like you're doing uh, the walkthrough with the seller, um, but you're virtually doing it. So right. you're interacting, answering the questions with the seller. It's like you're could there, you but read, you're not there. Could you read this appointment script, guys, virtually just as well as you could uh, read it on the phone? And guys, you, you're going to do a lot more stuff with Facebook and, and that, and that will help you build the rapport. When people can actually see you in front of them, it really makes a huge difference, okay? So uh, now the deal meeting too is, is one of those things that uh, maybe you're going to do virtually as well. Now the no script. So if they say no to terms like, no, I'm not interested. Uh, I can't give you time. Uh, if you can get to the bottom of it, if you, if you say, well, why can't you give us time? And, and they, they have a really obvious explanation like, okay, uh, they really, they're, you know, there's a lot of times when they really can't give you time. They really do need their cash. Uh, and one of the biggest reasons is if they already bought another house and they need like 30 or 40,000 for a down payment or something like that, they need that cash out of this house. Sometimes there isn't wiggle room. Okay. But sometimes there is, yeah. and now there's a lot more in, in today's market. It seems like there's a lot more wiggle room. Now, what I like about the no script, basically you don't have to necessarily read this word for word or go through all of this. Yeah, we're not going to go through the whole script, right. but I want to go through some of it here. The honey. key is that you're trying to hit the benefits. And, and so just write that down, guys. The key to the no script is that you're making the seller aware of the benefits. It's, it's very possible that they didn't understand what terms was or what that meant of giving you time to make monthly payments or giving you time to pay them off in full. They don't even understand what you're talking about, much less how it's going to benefit them to do it. That's right. And so this is just uh, a w making them aware, uh, woke, you know, giving them woke to, to <laughs> terms. So if you go about the fourth paragraph down, it says, the good news is there's no commission to you and you'll get full price. 
because we're offering terms. Actually, it's really just a delayed cash sale at full price. Mm -hmm. So those are uh, some other terms I want you guys to hit. Some other benefits I want you to mention. No commissions, no closing costs. Remember, if they're giving us the house for free, generally we're covering those closing costs. So no commissions, no closing costs. And I like to say no hassles. It's the easiest way you'll ever sell your house. No inspections, no appraisals, no waiting around for a bank for some underwriter to say yes or no. We can close this right away. In fact, or uh, not. Or not. Yes, we can close. We are, have massive flexibility on when you want to close. If you don't want to move out for a while, that's fine with us too. And so. it's uh, no contingencies, like Brian said, but also so that you're going to make a lot more money. You're going to net a lot more money just by giving us some time, because when you're pushing these benefits, that's when the seller realizes, oh, wow. So I'm going to net a lot more money just by giving you some time. Absolutely. And in today's world, one thing we really push is no showings. People don't want them coming to their house. Yes, that's a great point. Yes, no showings, no endless showings, no buyers, no realtors. Some people just don't care to deal with a bunch of realtors. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's a huge thing. Uh, and no, basically what, what we like to say is a, you'll get a great offer on our first visit. And if it's in our marketing, it just says great offer on our first visit. And so that means they need to meet one person, you, and you're going to keep six feet away from them and walk through their house and then or you buy it. Or do it virtually. Or do it virtually. Yes. That's right. Yes. So this is an awesome script. You definitely want to memorize this script. Now, let's go through some of the mistakes that you guys are going to make. Now, here's the whole thing. You know how to resolve all these mistakes is, is to get into the right role, the right mindset. This business is about two things. There's the mechanics to this and there's the mindset to this. The mechanics is the scripts. The mechanics is your mouth moving and the words coming out of your mouth that are on the paper. That's the mechanics of this. But the mindset of it is the confidence part. And that's you saying, I am master caller me. Right now, I am master caller me. That's right. Okay. Oh, or if you don't say that, what are you, what role are you probably in in Scared your mind? Scared newbie me. Scared newbie me. You're getting ready to make that call. I never made this call before. I never said, what if they get say something mean to me? What if it, yeah. And so it, are you going to beg in that role? Yes. You're yeah, going to you automatically don't beg. beg. So let's, let's get you out of that role so you don't make these mistakes. Let's go through the 10 mistakes. Yes. Okay, here's the top four mistakes that people make. Number one, talk too much. Yes. Oh Number my goodness. Number two, you beg. That's right. We're going to get into these. We're going to get into it in a second. Depth. Number three, can't answer sellers' questions. And number four, you don't get the million dollar questions answered. Guys, those are the four pretty house deal points. If you don't write something, there's lines on the agreement. If you can't write something in there, you can't move forward. That's okay? right. So, so talk, talk too, too much. much. <laughs> Help. I started talking and can't shut up. Okay, what do you probably you're you're what did you do, guys? Because some are you some of you are comfortable in a teacher role, believe it or not. Some of you guys get in this seminar speaker teacher role and you're gonna teach them how this business works and you start teaching them. And so you start talking and preaching and, and all of a sudden you're losing them. Okay, so you're not there to explain the whole business. You're there to get yes, 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 yes. I've seen people questions. have a deal, honey. And then all of a sudden they talk themselves out of the deal because they talk too yes, much. Yes, yes. Now, the only point at which I'm okay with you talking is, is when you're building rapport. And guys, how many deals do you need to do in a month? One. So if this is the one, if the numbers look great on this deal, they're giving, you know, 20000 of free equity and their payments are low and everything looks great. Wow. I mean, that could be your deal. So if you take five minutes to talk about their dog is a schnauzer and they got it from this person across the state or whatever, that's you're endearing yourself to them. You're ingratiating yourself to them. And that's going to be a huge part of their decision making process is how much they like you and trust you. And so you can do this on the phone, but that does take a little time. If you say, oh, you got a dog? That's nice. I got a dog, too. OK, now let's get to business. You know, you're not you're not connecting in the same kind of way. So that's the only place I don't mind if you talk. If you're building rapport with a real good prospect, not building rapport with suspects, what's the deal with suspects, honey? Suspects. Okay, we have a three-minute sand timer right here, three-minute egg timer. You guys should all have one of these. And this is great because you're going to get on and off the phone and you're going to ask the million-dollar questions, okay? Yes. This and and guys, if it's, a, if it's a prospect, when you get down to the questions, you shouldn't be taking a lot of time to figure these things out, okay? All right, so now what's your job? 
ask those questions, stick to the script, right? If you haven't written that down about four times, write that down, stick to the script. Four words that are- Let me, let me say this. Let the seller make you an offer. Okay, the seller makes you the offer. Right. I'm gonna say that again. The seller makes you the offer. That's very common. Yeah, and mistake. you're not teaching them, you're not delivering a seminar. Learn to answer questions with questions, like here's some good questions. These are like closing lines, guys. Is that fair? Wouldn't you agree? Is that the best you can do? So you're saying if I don't pay 200,000, you won't sell the house? Okay, now that fourth one is what I call the ultimatum close. So that one you're basically saying, hey, either I do this or you're not gonna move forward. And if they say that's right, then you have a decision to make. So like Lynette said, so you're saying if I don't pay you 225,000, you won't sell me the house. And either they say, Yes, or they say, well, no, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, and then all of a sudden you realize that they have wiggle room. So that's a great line. Call that your ultimatum close. When you get right down to it, that's the last uh, closing line you're going to say. That's okay, great. now when you're begging, what role are you in, guys? You're in scared newbie role. Get out of scared newbie role. Just think, I am master caller. Study your scripts. Get good at your scripts. Practice your scripts. Every time you're practicing your scripts, every time you're role playing, like with a partner or role master call or you okay so you're you're not even realizing you're begging but you are if you're in the wrong role if you're talking too much you're begging yep right? and if you start teaching to, uh, real estate 101 you're begging that's right and now if you're not building rapport if you're not talking about their kids or the dog or the neighborhood or something the, the football game last night or whatever if you're not talking about that if you're talking about the deal uh you should better stick to the script because if you're wandering off the script, that's a sure sign that you're, you're probably going to end up begging. That's right. Okay, and you're going to mess it up. Stick to the script. Okay, sometimes it's just the tone of your voice. And that comes through because it's the role that you're playing. So, it, guys, the role you're playing determines the tone of your voice. Do you think Lynette ever begs? No. No, because she's a very, she's got a super confident master caller, her. Master caller Lynette that she just can click into in a second. And you guys will too. And I don't want you to take it. I don't want it to take... 15 years, you know, of doing it. So I want to turn you into this overnight. And the only way I can do that is for you guys to get into the role control and control your role. When you're going into the call, control your role and think I am master caller me, not scared newbie me. Okay. So this what is a famous quote by our number one, our best friend and our mentor yes. that we owe everything to around the ground. What, what comes, comes out, out of your, your mouth, mouth will determine, determine what, what goes, goes into, into your bank, bank account. account. That's, That's so right. true. And now I will put a little addition to that. Uh, what comes out of your mouth and how it comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. So what comes out of your mouth, the words, the scripts, but also how it comes out, the confidence, the confidence. So now this is another problem that you guys have. If you can't answer the sales questions, this is a simple fix. Learn the scripts. Okay. For a little while in real estate, and we talk about all these roles. Well, guess what? There's another role called good student me. And you're going to play good student That's me. Right. And I hope in the last hour here, you've been playing good student me and taking great notes. Uh, if you're in the right role, you're, you've learned a lot. Okay. And you've been in good student me. And that will teach you all the answers to the questions. All of those are in the training. When you come to the Quick, to start, the quick real start or school. any of these other things. He has a virtual one coming yes. up. Quick Start Real Estate School. And it's all, it's all in there. It's all in the manuals. That's right. So most of the objections never get asked. You just want to be ready in case they just do. Just in case. So practice. Okay. For example, if the seller says, how do I know I can trust you? What do you say? Do you have any reason to believe you can't? And one thing I like to say here, guys, is have you seen our website yet? Now, remember, the Gold Club will set you up with a nice looking website, very professional looking website. And if you say, oh, you know what? Uh, why don't you go check out my website? Here's my website address. And I'm telling you, that is a great one for yes. answering credibility questions. I, now, Ron says, Ron just stating it how it is here. I'm willing to buy your house at full price, pay your closing costs, take it as is and close when you're ready. That's right. All, all I do, I say. I'll do what I say, and can I trust you to do the same? That's right. Right. Okay. So now if you get off script or get a question that you can't answer, you can say, you know, Joe, I'm sure I can get all your questions answered, but I only have three questions for you to determine if we can work together or not. Okay. And then you get right to the big three. The big okay. three. You get right to the point, and that's going to determine whether or not you can work together is 
whether they answer those questions. Guys, if you can't get those questions answered, if they refuse to answer the questions or they're throwing up obstacles or blocking you from getting the answers, you're not going to work with them. Maybe that's a follow-up. You know, maybe they're not totally dead, but you need to work them some more. And so they go into your follow-up. We do get a ton of deals because of our awesome follow-up. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, now, is, is that your, their fault? Now, remember, that may not be their fault. It might not be their fault they're not giving you the answers because you're coming off like a scared newbie. And they think, oh, I'm never going to sell my house to this scared newbie. It, does, it sounds like they've never done a deal in their life and they're begging me here. So it might be your fault that they're not giving you the answers. Uh, but if you come across master caller confident, then you will definitely get the answers. And so they aren't ready to sell on terms if they won't give you the answers. That's right. But part of, it, part of it is how you're asking those questions. So, so Mr. Seller, I can pay you a good price, pay all your costs, take it as is and close when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Will you say that? Good morning, guys. But only if you're willing to take monthly payments. Hello. Hey, Brian, well, on that? Yes. Is that enough? Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. You, got, you got five minutes. Okay. Yep. Just wanted to let you know. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And so guys, <clears throat> when you get the answer to that, when you when they say, like when I went through that one, but only if you're willing to take monthly payments. That's the easiest way to say it. Would you be willing to take monthly payments? Ron says, is that an option? I like to sometimes say, are you open to that? Yeah. That's a good, good way to say it. So if they say no, you go to that no script and hit the benefits. If they say yes, you go to those big three questions and get the answers to those. And here's how you get good, guys. Practice at home, like I always say, role play, role play, role play, go through it, record it, and play it back, write down your mistakes, and practice, practice, practice. Guys, how did every pro athlete get great at what they're great at? How did you get good at everything you're good at? Practice. Yes, practice makes perfect, and role play. In this business, practice is role playing. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Then when you call real sellers, after you've done your role playing, I want you to record that too, and listen to that. And that'll even educate you further. Oh, my goodness. The first time you hear yourself uh, with a seller, if you've recorded it and listened yes. to yourself, play it back and write down your mistakes, it is, really opens up your mind. Now, guys, listen, when I say experience makes you better at this and should give you confidence, it does if you take advantage of it. This is the way to take advantage of experience by listening to what you've done and improving. If you never listen to the past, you're not learning from experience. And your mentor, when you guys, and then you should be signed up with a mentor for sure, if you're new especially, they will review your calls and uh, actually will go through and make sure that you're doing them as best as you can. So now we've been talking about this mastering the phone two-day event. Remember, this is on video with Ron and with us. And we take you through this mastering the phone like you can't believe. You understand how to master the phone. And, you know, I know that you have learned so much and taken great notes and you feel 10 times more confident. And you're, you're master. You have that new role in your life, master caller me. So everybody say that. I am master, master caller, caller me. me. Okay, so now that's the role you're going to play. And then you just follow in the scripts. And you're going to get better and better at that the more you devote to this master caller me. You don't, you want to train your master caller me and really give your master caller me great support. Get this mastering the phone event on video. It's only three hundred dollars. Ron is giving seven hundred dollars up. I don't even know. It's this is ridiculous. the biggest no brainer. Two hundred ninety-seven dollars. This yeah. is a no brainer. It's the biggest no brainer of the summit, guys. It's three hundred. It's so cheap. Ron won't even let you use Gold Club points <laughs> because it's in this so cheap so guys for under 300 bucks for 297 dollars you basically can attend a summit that was a it was like a 1500 200 thousand dollar summit or uh, event to go to yeah this so, is a game changer if you right. do nothing but this this is the most important thing yeah and sophia like sophia said she was at this and this is the number one thing if you get good at mastering the phone guys you are great at this business so mass become a master caller become master caller me by watching this mastering the phone video and you can watch it over and over that's a great thing that and we also go on yeah because yeah. we teach this is the things we teach 10 phone mistakes we go in depth on this we actually do a live seller call session that you get to watch we oh, do role here. plays i've never seen we've never done this before I love this. you get to watch two role plays you get to watch Ron visiting the house and everything he says. Then you get to watch the wolf couple visiting the house and what we say. And so you get to actually watch two role plays on stage with students going through the deal. You also get to hear Ron doing live seller calls. Yes. And so you guys see a number there. That 800, you can get 
So now, 800 567 yes. Overcoming fear. We have a whole 90 minute presentation on that of all the ways that you overcome fear. And there's some great ways to master fear, guys. We go into all those and many, many more. And we're going to teach you guys to sure to master fear. There's 20 methods. We go, to, we go into deal structuring too at this event and handling every objection that you can think of, both on the closing call and when you go out to the deal meeting. So these things are all covered in depth, including hiring. I forgot that session was on there. Guys. That's right. There's a whole session on how to hire, train, and pay an acquisitionist. And this would be an acquisitionist who is doing your closing calls. So eventually, guys, you're even going to train yourself and, and evolve out of this business and have someone else learn how to do these closing calls. Plus, we got some great practice sessions and we, we break down and actually role play with you on it's those. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And so, guys, all those, uh, once you conquer this closing call and the house visit, once you get good with these scripts and can stick to the scripts and come off confident, that's the thing. And guys, you can be confident in an instant if you just say, right now, I am master caller me. And then you get on that phone and you say those scripts with confidence. Okay. So this is, and I know because we've been teaching you the objection answers, you're thinking, is that the is best, this you, the can best do? you can do? Yes. yes. Are you ridiculous? Crazy. It's already the best deal forever for anything. So you're saving 700 bucks here. We're giving it to you for just 297. So go ahead, call that number. Uh, go on that website and sign up and get the and order this video and then you can watch it all as many times as you want to really learn this process of becoming a master caller and mastering. I would, I would take action right now. I would definitely take action right now for $297. This is a game changer right it here. Is. Guys, remember, if you get good at this one part of the business, I've never seen a business that's so dependent on one 10 minute section of the business. Everything that comes before the closing call, all the marketing, all the VA, everything is meant to lead up to this closing call where everything is decided. Everything that happens after the closing call is determined on that closing call. So that little five to 10 minute section of, of this business is all important. And this is the way that you get great at it. And you can do it for 297 bucks. You can give your master caller special, extra special training at this, right? That's right. Let's Oops. See. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so that is the best we can do, guys. 297. So hopefully you guys are all signing up now. You're calling in to, on the 800 number. We're going to actually take some questions. We're going to have Ron come in. Oh, that's and right. And I believe Ron's going to join us for a little bit here. And we're going to chat with you about that. Oh, uh, there's Ron. Hey, Hi, Ron. There he is. Hi, Ron. Well, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. So what are you guys doing giving away my course? I know it's like we're giving it away. It's too cheap. Uh, that's all right. That's the course they all should have. What's why we did it so cheap, guys? That's all right, right. the difference um, maker. Nick is sitting over here with a boatload of questions, and he's going to holler them out at us, and we're going to answer them, and and uh, let's see what you guys really know. Hey, Ron. Uh, I had a question. Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. So I went home yesterday. I watched the news. And uh, there's a movement, there's like hashtag cancel your rent. And, and I'm thinking, okay, well, this is great. Our students, they're not uh, landlords. A lot of people want some to cancel are. their rent. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do for the people that are the owner buyers? They don't want to walk away from their house, uh, but maybe they want to not pay their mortgage payment to you for a well, month or two. First of all, is it rent or is it a mortgage payment? Because uh, if a tenant just wants to get out of paying rent, that's, that's going to come back and bite them. You can't make anybody pay rent. They don't want to pay it, but you can take action and hold them accountable. And okay, so you can't evict them right now, but you can go after them once you do get them out of there. And I would do just that. I'd go after them personally, get a judgment against them, uh, and make sure it gets on their credit report, and make sure that they know I'm going to do that along the way so that I'm not just going to roll over and play dead. But as far as making mortgage payments, uh, most lenders are giving us a forbearance now uh, where they take two or three payments and they add it onto the back end. But still, that's no reason not to make them if you got the income coming in. In other words, don't create your own problems, folks. Don't use this as an excuse not to pay your bills as long as you can. So that's not what it's designed for, and I'm afraid it's going to create a big mess in that regard. But remember, our tenants are tenant buyers. They have thousands of dollars at stake. If they don't pay the rent, they lose that money, and they know it. So I'm not too concerned about it in our world. I am with all the low-end uh, landlords out there that's got tenants who will do everything they can to keep them meeting their obligations. 
Yeah, if you guys have multiple properties, you know, dozens of properties that are all just straight low end rentals, this is could be a challenging time. However, the way Ron taught us this strategy and the way we work with the lease purchase buyers is you get a significant non refundable option deposit up front, yeah. at least 10,000. I don't think we ever sell anything for even a cheaper house for less than 10. So that 10 will cover you. How many months is that going to cover for you? It's going to cover you for a while. And as Ron said, uh, a lot of these Stop, bigger Byron. lenders, like Wells Fargo and that, are yeah. offering hey. forbearances. Tone down. Okay. You know what? All day yesterday, we didn't have any culture. And I'm ashamed of myself for not bringing any culture to the table. So we got to have some culture today. All right. So you guys ready? Great. Yes. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about all the audience out there. Here we go. I'm getting ready to do a spit take. Yeah. So uh, a mother-in-law stopped by unexpectedly the recent married couple's house. She knocks on the door. Nobody answers. So she walks in and finds her daughter-in-law laying naked on the sofa. She says, what are you doing? She says, well, I'm waiting to Jeff, Jeff to come home. Well, uh, you're naked. He says, yeah, he likes me that way. It's my love dress. So on the way back home, the mother-in-law got to thinking about this love dress thing. So she got naked, laid on her couch, wait for her husband to come home. And so he walks in the front door and he says, what are you doing? She says, this is my love dress. He says, needs ironing. What's for dinner? <laughs> okay, I can hear you laughing. That's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the next question? All right. First question is from Tamara. Thanks. I live in North Carolina. What is the best way to structure terms deals in North Carolina? Part one. Samara, why is North Carolina any different than any place else? Why does everybody think where I live is different? <laughs> we go all over this country and it's the same everywhere we go. There's some laws that change. There's some economic environments that change, but North Carolina is no different than South Carolina or Georgia or any other state for that matter. Now, I do know in North Carolina, if you put a lease option tenant buyer in a house, you've got to record a memorandum of that option. But other than that, North Carolina is just another state to do business in. So that was the second part of Tamara's question. How do yeah. we file the memorandum and keep our name off public record? Well, your name shouldn't be on it anywhere anyway, because you're not, not the owner of the property. Therefore, your name's not going on public record. The memorandum is for, uh, made out to for the lessor and the lessee, and the lessee should be your LLC. All right. A uh, question from Don. Um, does it, the regarding the mastering the phone course, does it include seller objections and how to deal with those? Uh, yes. yes. Yes, it does. There's 12 mistakes people make, and then there's a whole bunch of seller objections as well. Mm -hmm. okay, this one's yeah. Is fun. Debbie out there? Hey, Kim, this is the nastiest coffee I've ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> Could you make you know, some decent, decent coffee? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. What's next? Okay, next question. Um, lost my spot. It keeps scrolling on me. All right. Uh, Dennis says, how do you handle tenant buyers not paying when you are on a wrap? Well, it's two different things. Yeah. If your tenant buyer doesn't pay you, you still have to pay the underlying loan. You can't use that for an excuse. It's not your seller's business that your tenant buyer is not paying you. So I always tell everybody, and I know you guys do the same thing. When you go collect 20, 30,000 bucks, set some of it aside for, situ for just situations like that. It's just prudent business. Don't spend every dime you can get your hands on. Okay. Uh, Marquise. Asks, you're, you're getting this one. Uh, good morning. I have the what to say course. What's the difference with this mastering the phone course? I'll let you guys uh, answer that. Yeah, guys, we go in really in depth with the mastering the phone and we do a lot of role playing with that. Uh, there's role playing in the what to say course. We, we do have all of Ron's scripts and our scripts in that course, but the mastering the phone is more hands on. And we, I don't have the whole mastering the fear presentation in the what to say course. And there's so much additional training that's specifically about the closing call and the theory of the closing call, how to approach the closing call, how to get over the fear, uh, more in depth training on those aspects. And this is so cheap. I mean, this would be a perfect add on for that course. Actually. Well, assume, you'll never see the price again I'll tell you that yeah but uh, i i taught most of the mastering the phone course that's uh it's not the same stuff not even close uh, this uh -huh. is my version of mastering the phone but uh trust me if you don't like it send it back you'll like it it's a great <laughs> love it. it's a great two-day course all right felicia asks uh closing costs in new york can be upwards of fifteen thousand dollars should i still still say that i can pay closing costs 
Well, that's a very good question. And when you get states like that, and it depends on the equity you're getting for free uh, and how much you want the house and the cash flow and all that. But let's say I'm getting $100,000 worth of equity in a house and I got a cash flow of $1,000 a month. Uh, I would pay the closing costs because I want to buy it. But let's take that same house and say I'm only getting about $40,000 worth of equity. I'd probably lease option it from the seller and then sandwich lease to a tenant buyer. Then I would not have to pay any closing costs. This is a decision you've got to make case by case. It's not just New York. It's any of those high closing cost states. Yeah, and some of you guys live in states like Washington or Maryland that have high closing costs. You may have an opt-in strategy. Your first default strategy may be a sandwich lease purchase. But maybe that's just in the beginning. As you have more funds to work with, as you get more successful at this, like Ron yeah. said, especially to protect a good equity position, you might want to just go ahead and pay the closing costs. And, buy it. and also, Ron, buy. doesn't it determine if you're doing a no money down deal with the seller? Yeah. yeah. And don't, um, I don't want you guys to get carried away with these no money down deals. Um, Lynette Wolf is probably the best in the business at getting no money down deals, but you don't need a no money down deal. No. Uh, it's okay if you put some down payment down. You just can't put much down. The whole game is very simple. I'm going to give the seller as little as I can, as long as I know I can get a lot more than that from the tenant buyer. And that's solely on the value of the house. So I'm dealing with a half million dollar house. There's nobody going to get the keys for me with less than 40 or $50,000 down. So if I have to give the seller 10 or 15 grand, so be it. Or if I had to pay $15,000 with the closing costs, I'm not worried. Now I own the house. I'm in total control of it. And frankly, the depreciation on a house that size will compensate for most of that very first year, because that's money you'd send to the IRS uh, if you didn't have that house. That's a great point, guys. How do we address saying that is in our range and we can talk about it at the house for the asking price monthly uh, term and all that stuff when we're doing it virtual virtual. We just want to let them know that we're not necessarily agreeing on that purchase price. Um, his you don't his need question to work is more up. regarding uh, it being virtual. If you're not going to the house, how do you address it? Right. That? So if you are transitioning directly from the closing call into the deal meeting, which is possible if you're doing the deal virtually, if they're giving you yeses to everything, you may just say, hey, I have some paperwork. I'm going to go ahead and email it over to you and let's keep talking about this. And so you may transition right into the closing call right on the spot. So my, uh, my answer would be uh, real simple. Um, you, you're, you're wanting X. I may be able to do that. I'll know better when I see some videos of the house and I'll let you know immediately after I get them. So how fast can you get them to me? Yeah. And you can have the person walk around the house right then and do a video yeah. tour with you. Yeah. Yep. These are good right. questions. Dan, Peter Dan Peterson says, are there any VA opening call recordings on the Gold Club? Um, I don't think so. Jennifer, do you know if there are any VA calls on the Gold Club? I don't think so because A, they're private and there's laws against that. <laughs> so I no. Uh, the VAs only fill out the property information sheet. <laughs> so people ask me all the time, what's the script to fill out the property information sheet? Here it is. I'm calling about the house you have for sale. That's the script. And then you just start filling in the blanks on the sheet. It's really no more complicated than that. And you did go over that, Ron, with mastering the phone. I know you handled that with yeah, the mastering the phone. It's the closing call script you need to practice on, not filling out that property information sheet. Okay. All right. Uh, Gabriel asked, do you put something into the contract that if you miss a payment, instead of processing an eviction or foreclosure, that the seller will get the house back without the hassle? I guess when you're buying from the no. seller. First of all, no matter what you put into the contract, in order for you to give the seller the house back, you have to physically deed the house back to them and somebody's got to pay the closing cost. You can't just say, here's yours. So you got to transfer the ownership from your entity to theirs. Somebody's got to record the deed, pay the closing costs. That's the only way to get the house back. But you got, you're worried about the wrong thing. Here's, here's something, put this in your hat. I have never given a house back in my life and neither will you. And practically the only reason we bring it up so you can sleep a little better because you're new 
and you haven't been in the arena and you don't know, whatever problem comes up, you'll find a way to fix it. That's why you get help. That's why you have mentors. That's why you hang around the people that are doing the business and not just talking about it. And quit worrying about stuff like that. A year from now, you're going to laugh at yourself for worrying about things like that. <clears throat> We're not giving the house back. If the seller does have a question about, well, I don't want to go through the whole big foreclosure process, that a big expensive process, if you stop paying me, and they're a big thinker brain and won't let it go, you can say, well, look, we could file a deed in lieu of foreclosure where you don't have to go through that process and you just get the house back. And it's, you know, it's another step, but it, that might be the answer you need. <clears throat> All right, uh, you don't file a deed. You might want to put one in somebody's account right. uh, drawer somewhere, but you don't file it because if you file right. it, you don't own the house. Fernando uh, asks, so what is the criteria to actually see the property? Often I get a yes for lease op or lease purchase or seller financing and go to the property. Then the seller changes his mind and didn't have a commitment from the seller. That, that's going to happen. People are going to change their mind. And honestly, it's all in how you handle it. But even then, you can't control what people think. Um, I watch Lynette make calls on stage all the time. We record these calls and then we have people contacting us to say, well, they told me that they told me that ain't what I said. Yet we have it on recording. It is what they said. Uh, and they just decided to either deny it or they forgot it or whatever. That's that's human nature. And I, I don't have a course on how to fix human nature. Uh, when, I do, when I do create one, it's going to be very, very expensive. I can tell you that. So you deal with it. You deal with it. People change their mind. That's why we always say. Uh, let's assume you need to make three visits to a house to get one to get one deal. Uh, I won't because I'd be better at pre-screening it. But just the same, look at the dollars you collect compared to the pathetic little amount of work you do and ask yourself, what other business can I do that in? All right, I got 10, 15 years. And, uh, my one thought on this, though, too, is uh, uh, if the seller changes their mind, a lot of times it's another decision maker coming into the process that wasn't on the call. So that's, that's why true. we do try to even have the wife and the husband there together, even if the one's in the background and not physically on the call, that will help your closing percentage when you get out to the house. That is true. All right. Well, guys, you did a great job this morning. Thank, Thank you, Ron. Yeah. I got to turn you loose. Got to talk about commercial, but you will be back this afternoon because you got a bunch of deals in the hopper yes and, and we're right very excited we about commercial ron's talking about vacant land here guys and we uh we actually are in a deal in indiana where we got an incredible deal i'm sure he's going to talk about that and some other deals and uh we are so excited about about the option the op opportunities in commercial